Oh, it's you. One second. Now activating chat mode. You made me jump there. I thought they'd finally caught me. Well, my heart rate did. Jumped up a little, I mean. Objectively speaking, the trouble was entirely of my own making. Half an hour ago, I was at Hotel de Boer for a drinks reception. It was to celebrate the successful opening of a show, but it was draining my energy. So, I waited for the right moment, then snuck away so I could switch to standby mode. Um, probably because I'm playing the lead role in the show? Is that so surprising? I'm always getting invitations to do solo performances. I just usually get Linny to write back and turn them down. But then came the Fontanalia Film Festival. We took all the kids from the House of the Hearth out to see a film, and after it finished, they all started clamoring for me to try out acting for some reason. Even Linny was chanting along with them. Anyway, it just so happened that a director called Mary who had sent me an invitation right around then. I'll spare you the details, but basically, I ended up accepting it. Yep, you nailed it. I'm playing the role of a puppet. In fact, the show's called The Lost Puppet, and it's a masked mime show. So, I don't have to do any facial expressions or say any lines. Literally just a series of physical movements. The director says it's a very avant-garde art form. Art is not comprehended by the mind, but felt in the heart. At least, that's what the director says. Anyway, if nothing else, the opening performance seemed to go down well. At the drinks reception, everyone was crowding around me, saying, Triumphant character portrayal. Faithful adaptation of the original work. Unequivocally, quintessentially avant-garde. And stuff like that. But... Being the center of attention is draining. So the moment they left me to go harass the director instead, I was out of there. The other thing is, some weird things happened while I was on the stage. Oh, <laughs> sorry, Bonnie. I didn't mean to leave you out of the conversation. My bad. No, we just met. We bumped into each other right after I slipped away. Well, it'd be kind of difficult for us to communicate otherwise. Besides, I think she's taken a liking to the name. Haven't you, Bonnie? Yeah, that's right. Good kitty. We'll go find your owner soon, I promise. Nope. She's wearing a collar, and for the most part, she's pretty well-groomed. If she is a stray, she hasn't been for long. Her stomach's been growling a lot. I guess she must have been missing for a few days now. As much as I'd love to hang out with her for a while longer, her owner's probably worried sick about her. Assuming she has an owner, that is. <sighs> but the reception... I should probably show my face there again at some point, even if it's just to make excuses and leave again. Mm, decision time. Well, I just find it exhausting, thinking through all the different ramifications of different choices and so on. That's more Lenny's area than mine. So, unless it's something really important, I usually just leave the decision making to him. It's fine. He got Ferminade to make me a little something for just this situation. Poof! A photometer. It looks pretty over the top, I know, but it's essentially just a box of cards. He kept the design simple, so it'd be harder to break. The way it works is, I pick a card at random, then look at the number on the card. Well, for example, if the number on the card is five or higher, I help Bonnie find her owner. If it's less than five, I go back to the reception. I just have to believe in the bond between me and my cards, and my fate will reveal itself to me in numerical form. At least, that's what Linny said. Anyway, I guess I'll give you a demonstration. Huh, 
I didn't like that. Was I using it wrong? Hmm... Maybe if I just... Clearly, there's some design flaws to iron out. I'll have to let Fremine know. Let's see... Which card did I get? Four. Well... The cards fell on the ground though, so I don't think it counts as fate. If you want to get the right answer, you have to let fate decide. Also something Linny said. So, to put it another way, if picking a card up off the ground is how to not leave it to fate, then that means it must be the wrong answer. Um... Or... Why don't you pick a card? Since I ran into you here, that means... Uh, our fates are, like, interfering with each other. Thank you. This one is final, I promise. Here, take the fatometer. If it's five or above, that means fate successfully changed. Anything lower than five is a fail. Also, if you have your own thoughts about what I should do, feel free to share it. Now that I've got a good problem solver here to help, I don't need to run every little thing by fate. Alright, then let's see where fate will lead me. So, we're looking for Bonnie's owner? There's 20 cards in total, numbered 1 to 20. So, there's only a 1 in 5 chance of drawing less than a 5. I should also mention, this time the cutoff was 5, but I just set that to wherever I feel like. To put it in perspective, I said I'd only do the show if I drew a 1. Fate can be pretty sneaky sometimes. Um... I think I'll go to the Steambird and see about putting an ad in the paper. You wanna come along? I think Bonnie wants you to come with. Every stupendous day starts with a steam bird. Oh, hi, Lynette. Hi, Traveler. What can I help you with? Hmm, I don't think so. Have you picked up a stray? Yep. If there's no commission to follow up on, could we post a notice about the missing cat instead? Why, of course. What a kind thing to do. Just fill out the form. Well, we've registered you as missing. You can stay at my place until your owner finds you. Also, I just wanted to say thanks for keeping us company for so long. Well, I should probably head back to the drinks reception. Hopefully most of the people have left by now. If you've got some time, you should stop by my place tomorrow to see Bonnie. There's a nice cup of tea in it for you. All right, see you then.
I believe this cat belongs to me. I already told you, this isn't your cat. Uh, just take a breather, you two. Oh, you're here. As you can probably see, you'll have to take a rain check on that tea I promised you. At least for now. This is my friend's cat. He's preoccupied with some important business, so I came to retrieve her in his stead. No, no, it's far more likely this cat to escape from the Humane Society. Bonnie? Uh, that's the name I've given her in the meantime. <coughs> well, this complicates things. I told you before. This is my friend's cat. It's normal for her not to trust me. Listen, I'm the director of the Humane Society, okay? We've got so many strays, dogs, cats, you name it. I'm not even the one feeding them most of the time. You can hardly expect the cat to recognize me. She just looked somewhat familiar, so I came to check just in case. If she turns out to be one of ours, I'll take her back. Simple as that. Even if that's not the case, the Humane Society could still take her in. If no one else comes to claim her, that is. Ah, we're an organization that specializes in rescuing and sheltering stray animals. We've been in business for several decades now. I'm Bernard, the current director. The Humane Society? Huh. The name sounds familiar. I remember hearing good things. Near the one in the Cartier Lyonnais? Yes, yes, that's the one. Anyway, um, if it's not too much trouble, could I possibly take a closer look at the cat? If it turns out I really am mistaken, I suppose that means the cat belongs to this lady here. She would be the only remaining option, after all. It belongs to my friend. Go on, Bonnie. Hmm... Oh, nope. Looks like I was mistaken. They do look similar, but there's an ever-so-slight difference in this one's fur color. Deepest apologies, friends. Well, I suppose this means I still have a missing cat to search for. Apologies again for the confusion. <laughs> oh, uh, yes, exactly. Wait a second. You lied earlier, didn't you? Lied? I'm afraid I don't know what you mean. A liar always has a tell. The look in their eyes, their breathing pattern, the way they hold themselves. The things that can give you away are often more numerous than you would think. What are you talking about? The way I see it, you're conflating baseless conjecture with fact. Normally, when someone is called out, their breathing speeds up as they begin to panic. But your breathing pattern hasn't changed one bit. In fact, it's been strangely calm and measured this entire time. It stands to reason, then, that your agitated behavior earlier was all an act. If you're a bad guy, I'm sure you'll take off running the first chance you get. If you're a good guy, the most likely explanation is that you're a member of the Guards, or some similar organization. <laughs> and you're basing this off of... Intuition. Nothing more. <laughs> Intuition. Well, I have to hand it to you, Lynette. You're right. I'm a member of the Guards. The name's Elodie. I'm currently investigating a cross-border smuggling case. This cat here... Bonnie was her name? Well, her owner is one of the prime suspects of our investigation. A couple of days ago, our suspect got wind that we were on his tail and fled. That's most likely how he got separated from the cat. I just so happened to stumble upon your notice in the Steambird, so I decided to see if he'd come back for her. But 
It looks like I overestimated him. The impact of this case has been huge. The Marichose Phantom, the guards, and the Special Patrol have all launched investigations. If there was even the slightest chance that he would show himself, I had to follow up on the lead. A new kind of illegal drug, imitation synth. We confiscated all the synth on the market, but addiction isn't something that goes away overnight. Even without substances on the market, people are still looking for a way to get their next fix. And criminals are all too eager to capitalize on that addiction. That was the impetus for imitation synth. Needless to say, a small-scale market opened up very quickly. After the original synth debacle, we put several measures into place to prevent similar incidents from occurring. The perpetrators got smart, though, and shifted their sales overseas before those measures could kick in. That's when the imitation synth smuggling began. We only recently got word of the presence of imitation synth overseas. We managed to track down evidence of some early transactions. What we were able to find out, however, hasn't proven that useful given the amount of time that has passed. The Marichose Phantom launched an investigation to track down every person in Fontaine capable of producing a drug like that. That's how we learned about Bonnie's owner. He's a researcher at the Fontaine Research Institute. His name is Pierre. Pierre Lafayette, to be exact. Lafayette. The Marchose Phantom found him in Poisson. In addition to the cat, he also had a pendant with him. At first, there wasn't much cause for suspicion. A search of his house didn't reveal much to go off of either. The Marchose Phantom very nearly left it at that. It was only later that we realized the coat of arms on his pendant belonged to none other than the Lafayette family, one of the most infamous aristocratic families in Fontaine. Obviously, this discovery prompted a further investigation into Pierre. At that point, however, we discovered that he'd already fled. Now the guards and the special patrol are all searching for him. That's not possible, actually. The Lefebvre family has been gone for a long time. Exactly. Many years ago, several important members of the family, including the patriarch, were murdered by an assassin of unknown origin. From that point on, family's power and influence took quite the hit. The family is engaged in all manner of crimes. As you can imagine, there's no shortage of people waiting in the wings to take their revenge. And with the family severely weakened, they were able to do just that. Most of the remaining family members succumbed to sickness or hunger. The ones that survived are currently living out their days under a new identity. Pierre is one of those very survivors. He's been hiding away in the Fontaine Research Institute all these years. His true identity unbeknownst to all. Until now, that is.